If he wants to be a poet, you need to know how to sail the seas without losing your way. Fight off skeletons, dodge lightning, and be ready to go down with the ship if needs be. Or at least that's what I learned while on the adventure that I'd like to share with you today. I only just started playing Sea of Thieves, but it's been a lot of fun. I like covering Easter eggs in the games that I enjoy, so I was pleasantly surprised to see that Rare has spread a bunch of Easter eggs across the Sea of Thieves. What's special about this game is that almost all of those Easter eggs are actually references to memorable people, places, and things from the Sea of Thieves community itself. Like for example, if you mosey on into a general clothing store located on any of the outposts and ask to sample their finest peg legs, you'll find the Sea Dog Peg Leg. A small accident with a gunpowder barrel and this bit of wood created the legend of Peg Leg Perez. That's named after self-described rare fanatic and member of the community, Jeff Perez. And scrolling over onto the makeup, the Stream Sailor, which is inspired by a famous pirate who was known for his sense of style and loyal following, aka Dagger McTimbers, who shared this picture on Twitter showing off her new Sea Thieves controller with matching makeup and nails to boot. I always try to give credit where credit is due, so I want to mention here that the vast majority of the Easter eggs that I'll be showcasing in this video were actually compiled by the community itself, hosted in a forum post updated by Picaroon that I'll link down in the description. Going with the spirit of the game, I decided to plot out a course that you can see here and sail across the Sea of Thieves and attempt to see all the Easter eggs for myself. This video documents that adventure. And by the way, quick shout outs to content creator Shillianth who made the original version of the Sea of Thieves map that I'll be using throughout the video to keep you in the loop so you know what's going on. With that, our journey begins at Sanctuary Outpost, which has the most Easter eggs on a single island. Firstly, the island's tavern is called the Georgian Kraken, represented by a kraken holding a broom, which is actually named after a member of the community, Clumsy George. And inside the tavern, on the left wall we can find a stunning piece of artwork depicting a man looking out at a line of kraken tentacles rising out of a dark sea. This is an homage to Captain Balzonia, a member of the community known for taking wonderful screenshots and sharing them with the community. For example, these he shared on Twitter back in February. Across the room on the wall to the right of the fire is a flag with three monkey heads painted on, in honor of four moderator tri-headed monkey. And heading outside, across the way on a small island adjacent to Sanctuary Outpost is a sack of letters, in which we can find one that says PC Pioneers, Captain Cross, named for the player of the same name who contributed to the Pioneer program that provides users with early access for testing. On another small island near the water tower, we can find this barrel filled with bananas with the name Freaky Dusty on it, named after the player who both ate the most bananas and healed from them back when the feature was first added in the technical alpha. And the last thing of note on this island is a bucket nailed to this post near the Sanctuary Outpost shipwright. On it we can see an engraving of a player's name, Carson is pro who can only imagine is a pro with a bucket. With that, I'm ready to set sail, but sailing across the Sea of Thieves is much easier and more fun with the crew. Can you can you see me when I'm over here? Uh, no, it's good enough. So say hello to my friend who will be helping out with this adventure. Together we set sail and head northeast to Lone Cove. It's on this quaint island that we can find a poster nailed to a wooden structure that reads Missing, Captain Jack, named for a member of the community that left on a short hiatus, hence the missing part. We have a lot more island to visit, so without delay we set sail heading northwest to the crescent-shaped island of Smuggers Bay. However, sometimes the bright blue waters can obscure what hides deep below. I got the one up top. Is that spooky music? Oh, uh... Uh oh, good. what is this spooky music is not good. Oh, it's oh. the Kraken. Oh god, no. Shoot the tentacles with the cannonball before it blows our ship up. Okay. Oh god, I can't aim to save my life. Literally. As my first mate prioritized repairs, I focused on returning fire while strategizing how to keep us afloat. Did I hit the anchor so that we don't... Is it leaving us alone? A bunch of them just went under the water. Oh, we've sailed away from it. It's Oh, not... thank god. It's, just, it's still just sitting over there. Actually, it looks a lot like the painting I just saw. No? Throughout that battle, we strayed off course, but before long, we were back on track and soon arrived in one piece to the island of Smuggler's Bay. It's here that we can find a few different Easter eggs. Firstly, on this rock facing the bay, we can find a hook painted with the player's name, Deathfire, who earned the most gold and stole the most chests back in the technical alpha. And heading up the hill, we can find a campsite with a small drawing sitting near the fire. The drawing is actually of Smuggler's Bay, 
that Twitter user SRW's five-year-old son made back in December of 2018. Here's the two of them side by side. Following the island around to the back, we can find this cave, which houses a few spooky candles surrounding a book with a skull and sea thieves on it. This is actually a replica of a custom book which housed a custom Xbox controller that players Xbox Addict and Jordy Tommy made and gave to Rare. Xbox Addicts unfortunately passed away back in 2018, which is when this easter egg was updated with the candles, serving as a memorial for an honorable member of the community. From there, our final destination is up on the ridge, where we can find a broken target resting against a wooden structure with bullet holes in it, and the name O Commando O carved into it, which, as you guessed, is the name of a member of the community. As we depart Smuggler's Bay, night has fallen and our voyage has us heading due south for Cannon Cove, so we decided to partake in a bit of evening musicery. They're working? Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Uh, stop the music. What is that? I think that might be cracking again. Maybe, but I... No, it's Megalodon. As if drawn forth by our music, a fearsome Megalodon surfaces, ready to, like, bite the crap out of our ship. Unlike last time, we're ready for a fight. Do we want to turn so we can continue to fight him? Nah, yeah, I'm okay with that. Alright, cool, so it's happening. We circled around because this time, there's no running. Oh, Ooh. oh god, I, no, I got, I got thrown off! No! No! Drop maker! Oh god! We both got thrown off. Oh god, no! Chip, come back! We can just, we can head off the ship at the pass. Yeah. <laughs> Chip! Chip, please! Oh god! Alright, I'm almost back on. Should I drop anchor, or what do you want to do? Um, oh, maybe. I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Oh god, I hit him! Oh! Okay. Oh god, it worked. Oh, got him? Oh, right on, I got him. Oh, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him! Oh god! Ooh. Get back on, get back on! No! No! Crap! Well, the boat's still turning, so that's good. Hey. Oh god, what is happening? Oh boy. We did it! I want that meat! I want that meat! Eventually, Shadowmoth fell, and we were victorious. There were a number of treasures that were sold off at Sanctuary Outpost, as well as some exotic meat that we cooked uh, to a nice golden brown that we'll sell later down the road. Back on track, I expertly parked the ship alongside Cannon Cove's dock. Speaking of, walking straight down the dock will lead us to a large rock, upon which we can find five names carved into it. Ioni Falcon, Night 13, the Aaron Lay, Runic, and Catchy Walker, sorry if I mispronounced any of those, were the first non-Microsoft people to play the technical alpha way back when. And walking around to the back side of the island, we can find this cave in which there is a barrel and a coin with a knife through it. On the barrel is the name the Aaron Lay, uh, which in addition to the aforementioned Easter egg, he also made a Sea Thieves coin that he gave to Rare back at San Diego's Comic Con in 2016. And if you don't know, the name he goes by these days is Picaroon. After finding those two easter eggs, we reboarded the ship, but before setting sail, I couldn't help but admire this view of the island. It was... breathtaking. And maybe I sat there for a bit too long, because a storm had rolled in, and uh, we were now directly in the middle of lightning country. And apparently, my nerves of steel are quite conductive. We are in the middle of a- oh god! Whoa, ah, Jesus Christ! Did I just get hit by lightning? I- I- yeah, we got hit by lightning! Oh. <laughs> Alright. We're good. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a bit much. Ah! Finally landing at the Golden Sands outpost, heading into the tavern, we can find this piece of paper posted next to the fireplace. At the top is the name of a player, Dread Pirate Doug, who made his very own pirate resume, as seen here, that inspired this easter egg. Outside, back behind the Weaponsmith's building, is a destroyed explosive barrel with pirate legend Jackie's boombox named after the first player to run into the rare crew during their weekly streams. And finally, on the northeastern side of the island, laying against the water tower is a skeleton holding a quill and a long piece of parchment paper. At the bottom, we can see the player's name, Daimyo Dorima, 
known for providing extensive and lengthy game feedback. With that, we once again set sail, the sun has set, and we're sailing dark to avoid any unwanted attention. For the first time so far, other ships can be spotted in the distance. You never know if another ship holds friends or foes, so we decided to keep our distance and landed at Mermaid's Hideaway. Down on the beach, reaching up towards a rock is a skeleton with fish bones living in the ground around it. Upon the rock is a player's name, Archangel Aeon, who apparently swam the longest amount of time in a single session in the technical alpha. And also near the beach, located at this camp, is a signpost with a dog and concertina painted on, honoring the player Tadoge Swift for being a great member of the community. And this last one took me a while to actually find, despite knowing its location, as it was sort of hiding in plain sight. At the top of the ridge, posted to the wooden structure looking out towards the sea, is this poster advertising for Zareem's infamous pirate club, inspired by Zareem's contributions in moderating the Sea Thieves Xbox Club. With night quickly approaching once again, we set sail and leave Mermaid's hideaway behind us. All the way there, we kept a close eye on other player-controlled ships out in the distance. As we approached Wanda's refuge, it became clear that there were skeletons on the island aiming their cannons right at us, but as you no doubt know, nothing can take me by surprise. Uh, I'm gonna evasive maneuvers- OH GOD! <laughs> that went right through the sail and hit me. Ah. After landing on the island, I set out for the central hill. Not far up is the ruins of a building, upon which we could find this wanted poster for Doomai 2008, for his positive contributions to the community, that scallywag. Since that's the only point of interest on this island, just as quickly we're back out on the seas, this time taking care to avoid sailing back into the aforementioned shooting range. Leaving the island behind us, we sailed directly south, as our next destination was the finest trading post. However, at this point we knew we were not the only ships out there, so I was a bit on edge. We tracked another sloop sailing right in our path, and as if they could hear my worries, they turned and began sailing right for us. We were ready to retaliate if necessary, but trading cannonballs with another ship is not the goal of this adventure, so I had my first mate raise a white flag as if to say, hey, like, don't hurt us man, we're cool. And it seems he got the message, raising his sail and letting us float past without issue. Finally, we arrived at the finest trading post, and at this point, parking the ship was a breeze. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah, I messed I'll it up. Fix it. There is an Easter egg here, but the biggest reason I wanted to get here without issue was so that we could finally sell the cooked megalodon meat we got earlier in the adventure. It ain't much, but it's honest work. That done, we can head over to the Sea Post Hut, as there is a model ship on the shelf worth checking out. Looking closely, it has the rare colors and the name The Allegiant engraved on the plaque, a reference to a member of the community named Chok Muju, hope I said that right, who sent rare a model ship of the same name back in March. From there we head southeast to Shark Bay Cove, where yet another easter egg awaits us. On the south shore, we can find an empty campsite with a framed picture of two men. In it is Merrick, who we just met back on the finest trading post, and a player who posted a picture on Twitter stating, Hey, Sea of Thieves, it's me, Merrick's son Derek, and I'm just here to say how incredibly similar I am to this guy. Merrick was originally stationed here back during the Hungering Deep campaign, and after he was moved, the photo of the lovely family was left in his place. Now, the route I planned out and recorded had me originally heading to Plunder Outpost, but there's actually another easter egg that I'd like to share with you located at Lost Cold Fort. Later in the evening I came back and luckily the fort was empty of enemies so I could saunter on in to the fort central room where we can find this poster describing a number of noted gold hoarders. Honored magnates and sovereigns, our treasured company should be aware that these names have engaged in marauding and piracy to such a vast count that it warrants your attention. Our faithful return to the hidden waters cannot come soon enough. May we employ in the service of the Horde. As you no doubt expect, each of those names are players who were the top earners during the technical alpha. Back on track, we sail on over to Plunder Outpost. Heading on into the Drowned Rat Tavern, there's a plaque next to the bar that reads ZZ Detox ZZ's drinking spot named for a player who drank like a lot of grog. This island's other easter egg is actually outside, up on one of the cliffs. To reach it, I need to fire out of the cannon, but as is the first time either me or my friend has ever actually used this mechanic, it took a bit of time. Once I finally got up there, on the correct cliff, we can see a charred skeleton alongside the name Dead Sniper 19515 who fired themselves out of a cannon 
93 times when the feature was first added back in the technical alpha. From there, I carefully snapped every bone in my body on the way back down before setting sail for Chicken Isle. On this peaceful island known for its plentiful wildlife, we can find a painting of a cast surrounded by chickens, paying tribute to Seihei Rocco, who held a chicken rave at this very location. Let's go, chicken rave! A short trip east, and we find ourselves at Snake Island, specifically the center landmass. Following the path up the hill, we can find the player Tartan Snake 8's name on the side of a snake basket for being a positive member of the community and also always talking about snakes. Heading southeast, our next destination is Crow's Nest Fortress, or more specifically, the top of it. For this easter egg we need to visit the actual crow's nest, and that means more cannon firing. After our previous attempts with the cannon, I think we're starting to get the hang of it. Oh, oh, oh god no! Oh god, oh no, hi! Hey, okay. No! Ah. Oh! Ow! Oh. It was so hey. perfect! Once we finally got up there, our reward is this crow painted onto the boards up here in its nest. This is in honor of community member and content creator, The Crow's Nest, who is one of the first YouTube channels to cover the game. From there, our next stop is the Ancient Spire Outpost, and as it happens, there's yet another cannon-related easter egg. I attempted to recreate it and fire myself directly into the doorway of the tavern, close, but not quite. Up on the doorframe is a plaque that reads, Lindsay Elise, mind your head, in honor of the Twitch streamer of the same name who pulled off the stunt that you can see in this clip. But I also mm, that was good. Once inside the tavern, on the left wall we can find a painting of this pirate crew, which is actually based on a group of cosplayers who went to Dragon Con rocking their best pirate gear. Our last destination on this island is down on the hill, inside the equipment shop. Looking down, we can see a violin sticking out of Tim's counter, which has the name tag on it, which reads Freya Catherine, in honor of a talented musician of the same name who made a violin rendition of the song Be Calmed. From there, our voyage takes us due east, to Morrow's Peak Outpost. Located on the dock near the Merchant Alliance NPC is a box marked to Elena from Dominic. This is actually inspired by a post on Reddit of players from Germany and the USA becoming friends through Sea of Thieves and exchanging their favorite candy. Just as quickly as we enter the dangerous waters of the Devil's Roar, we leave heading northwest to Shipwreck Bay. At this point, we only have a few islands left to visit, and we were getting a bit restless. Oh, well, we're getting shot at. As our destination grows ever closer, we spotted a sloop off in the distance. Off to our uh, port. Our pads are going to collide. I, I want to see what they do. I think they're coming in. Yeah, they're, they're, they're docking. Anyways, we dropped anchor within spyglass distance of Shipwreck Bay and waited for them to leave. They uh, didn't for quite a while. Sure, we could sail up there flying a friendly flag, introduce ourselves and hope that they're also friendly. However, I might be a bit of a coward, so I decided to do what any dedicated captain would. I left my friend behind to protect the ship while I leapt into the ocean and swam all the way to the island. Sure, it's the middle of a stormy night, but I only need to stay long enough to get footage of the easter egg and then I can just teleport back. Speaking of, on the southern shore of Shipwreck Bay, we can find a pair of skeletal legs sticking out of the ground with the player's name, Ioni Falcon, scratched into the rock, in honor of the player who died the most in one play session by falling from the ship's crow's nest after fall damage was introduced way back when. From there, we've been undetected thus far, so I just swam directly into the sea. Oh no! Oh, don't hurt me! Leaving those terrifying pirates behind, our next stop was Daggertooth Outpost. Inside the Snake Pit Tavern, there's a poster nailed to the left of the bar that says, Beware, Fizzy Fox is the notorious pirate killer, named for a player who sent 37 pirates to the Fairy of the Damned and being the deadliest pirate back during the technical alpha. 
and outside, posted on the water tower is wanted. Music me for saying pew pew every time they shoot their pistol. This sea is filled with scoundrels. On our way to our next destination, Gallingrave Outpost, we were confronted by another Megalodon, this time an ancient one rather than a Shadow Maw. Having learned my lesson about the conservation of motion last time, we were much more careful, avoided getting knocked out, and took it down without much issue. There, got him. Nice. At Galleon Grave Outpost, next to the Merchant Alliance NPC is this package and hat, marked from Leslie and referencing this heartwarming post made back in August of 2018. The package in question was a new PC with Sea of Thieves installed, being delivered to a friend who was undergoing chemotherapy and wanted to play the game but couldn't run it. Right after getting footage of that easter egg about the game bringing people together, there was a ship sailing right towards us. Oh my god, he's friendly! Okay, this guy just rolled up on us. I said... I said, Mr. Sloop, we're friendly, and he parked and he's friendly. While my friends started playing music with the new guy, I went and got footage of the other two easter eggs, one of them being this target outside the weaponsmith with the name Cassie marked into it, in honor of a player who had the most accurate shot to date back in the technical alpha, and the other is up on the balcony atop the island's titular wrecked galleon, there is a dog bowl with bones and an eye patch, and the name Kato on the side, in honor of Kato or Kato, either way. The dog, who by all accounts is a very good boy. Having got the footage I needed, we were ready to head out, but first, I spoke a bit with the stranger. As it happens, he's another new player and he seems like a pretty nice guy, even offering to join our crew if we would have him. Since our adventure is almost complete, we instead shared some of our cannonballs, planks, and food with him. He mentioned having some trouble with controlling his sloop as a one-person crew, which I can definitely understand. I imparted some of the lessons I've learned from my experience ramming into docks, and in no time, he was on his way back out into the sea. He was the first person we actually came face to face with thus far, and honestly, it was a pretty nice experience. Leaving Galleon Grave Outpost behind, our final destination was Marauder's Arch, which was directly to the north. Within view of the island's fort is this skeleton, munching on a banana, peel and all. As you can tell by the name, this is in honor of Griffin, a true pirate at heart who knows the right way to eat a banana, one crunch at a time. Publisher uh, press conference thing of E3. Um, we've got a lot more to come, so stay tuned. Uh, we've got stuff tomorrow, we've got hands-on impressions coming, all sorts of gameplay stuff, just really run-of-the-mill traditional hands-on video game E3 coverage. <laughs> With that, our adventure is just about complete. We've seen a number of wonderful easter eggs inspired by equally wonderful members of the Sea of Thieves community. I wasn't entirely sure what the goal of this video was when I started, but I'm still not sure. Uh, but still, I hope you had a good time. That said, there is one final easter egg I'd like to share with you, but to do so, I must pass on from this sea plane of existence. It's here, etched into the wood of this otherworldly ship, that we can find the name of Hallower 1980, who back in the Technical Alpha 0.1.0 became the very first player to be sent to the Fairy of the Damned, which took just 7 minutes and 32 seconds. I don't know about you, but that's an accomplishment I would be quite proud of. With that, we've looked at all of the easter eggs that are currently in the game, at least as far as I'm aware of. I hope you had fun following along with this little adventure of ours, and thank you for watching. This video ended up being way longer than expected, so thank you for watching. I have to get through this outro quick. I want to give quick shoutouts to my channel members that you can see on screen, and even bigger shoutouts to Christy Contras for being a super fan. If you'd like to support the channel and join the list of wonderful people as seen here, it'd be much appreciated. That's about it for the video. I'll see you in the next one.